So don't make any slagged all the time. You want a little yeet? <laughs> <laughs> so gradually, as the time went on, I picked up the lowland dialect. If I was talking in my old accent, I'd be talking more like a Highlander, like a Tuchter. Sort of like um, a real West Coast of Scotland person. My old native tongue, I'd say, like, for example, well, I'm going down the road, I'm going to go to the shops and I'm going to buy myself some bread. Or else, if I was talking in my Argyll dialect, I'd say, I'm going to do the shops and I'm going to get myself some bread. So it's sort of like a, a Glasgow accent. To me, I feel a tooth as a... Well, I may be wrong saying this, but I f to me, I feel a tooth as a... a real, a, a real Scottish Highlander. Whereas Glasgow and that, they're just... Lowlands. I wish I'd, wish I'd still had my old lingo. The Highlanders have stood watch over British castles on British territory from Edinburgh to the Ganges. Driven from their lands by poverty and oppression, they were forced to learn the language of their old enemies and by a final irony, carried it for them to the four corners of the world, from Sydney to Saskatchewan. All that's left of the fighting clans are the great names, Campbell, Cameron, MacDonald and MacLeod. The original Gaelic of so many Jacobite ballads longs for the return of the Bonnie Prince. But of course, he'll never come. His people are in exile. Their words have been translated into the English of an English-speaking world. And only their music lingers. My bonny moor hen, my bonny moor hen, up in the grey hills, down in the glen. It's when ye gang but the hoose, when ye gang ben, I drink a health to my bonny moor hen. My bonny moor hen is gayed o'er the main, and it will be summer ere she comes again. But when she comes back again, some folk will ken. Oh, joy be with you, my bonny. 